Welcome to module 6.4. In this lesson, you learn how to work with non-symmetrical sections. You can change the orientation of non-symmetrical structural framing by clicking on the flip symbol when viewing the model in plan. The element will flip around the center front back reference plane in the family. Go ahead and open up project A. The project opens in the 3D view. In this module, we're going to create a balcony detail on the second floor. In the project browser, go ahead and double click on 0 02 second. The balcony is going to be created in between grids 2 and 3. In this example, we will create a called out view and then work within that called out. To create the called out view, go ahead and select the view ribbon and on the view ribbon, select call out. We'll then construct a call out view in approximately this location here and we'll place the call out here. We'll select the call out and we can use the grip here to drag the call out bubble somewhere more convenient, perhaps here. Once we have the call out created, we can then go ahead and open up the view. To open the view, we can either double click on the call out head or in the project browser, we can double click on 0 02 second call out 1. OK, so the call out view is now open. If we go down to our view control toolbar, I'm just going to change the scale here to 1 to 25. And we're now ready to start to work on our balcony detail. I'm going to use reference planes to help us set out the geometry of our balcony. To create the reference plane, we'll select the structure ribbon. And on the far right hand side, you'll note here we have reference plane. We'll select reference plane and we'll construct two vertical reference planes here. These are going to control the balcony width. And we'll have another horizontal reference plane over here, which will be the depth of the balcony. Of course, we want to make sure that these are accurately constrained. So on the quick access toolbar, we'll select the align dimension tool and we'll dimension from grid two to this reference plane here and then from grid three to this reference plane here. And finally, we'll dimension this reference plane here to grid A. To release the align dimension tool, we can select modify or press escape. And now we can set out our geometry more accurately. So I'm going to begin with this reference plane here. I want to set this to be 1200 from grid 2. I'll do the same here. I'll select this reference plane. I'll then pick the dimension. And again, I'll set this to 1200. Finally, I'll select this reference plane here. And this one will be set to 1200 as well. OK, so we now have these reference planes configured and ready to use to create our balcony. We're going to begin by using parallel flange channel. To do this, on the structure ribbon, we'll select beam. And on the context ribbon, we'll go ahead and select load family. In the load family dialog box, let's browse to structural framing. And then we'll browse to steel. And then we'll go to British standard. And here you can see we have PFC parallel flange channels. We'll go ahead and open this. This is a catalog file. Don't forget in the catalog file here, we can zoom in and out by holding down a control key to help us visualize the sections a bit easier. And in this example here, we're going to use the PFC 200 by 90 by 30. We can then go ahead and select OK. OK, so let's now have a look on the context ribbon. And you can see here that currently we're going to tag this on placement, which is fine. On the options bar, the placement plane is going to be set to reference plane 02 top of steel. The structural usage is set to automatic and here you can see that we have chain on. In a properties palette in the type selector, note here that we're currently using our PFC parallel flange channel. The Z justification for our steel is set to top. So now we'll model our PFC. I'm going to start from the intersection of this steel here and I'll now just trace around the outside face of my reference planes. To release the command, I'll select modify on the context ribbon. And of course here, you can now see that we have our parallel flange channel. Notice as I've modeled the PFC, you can see that it's modeled from its centroid. To ensure that the PFC is constrained to the reference planes, we're going to use the align tool. To use the align tool, we can either type in AL, which is the shortcut for align, or we can go to modify and select the align command here. I'm going to begin by selecting the reference plane and then the back face of the parallel flange channel. Again here, I'll select this reference plane and the back face of the parallel flange. 
and again here and you can now see the geometry is aligned okay we can then press escape to come out of the align tool you can see at the minute that the toes are pointing internally into our balcony which is actually what i wanted but if i wanted to change the orientation of the steel i could select it and here you can see that we have flip instance which is this double arrow You'll notice though that when working with non-symmetrical sections, it's very difficult to actually see that symbol. So a little tip here, if you go down to the view control toolbar and select wireframe, you can then very easily see that flip symbol. And of course, all non-symmetrical steel sections will have that flip symbol. Okay, so I'm going to continue to place out some more PFC in here. So we'll select this parallel flange channel here. We'll right mouse click and create similar. We could also type in CS for that. We'll continue now to create some more parallel flange channel. In this example, I just want to draw single members. So on the options bar, I'm going to remove chain. And now I'll go from the centroid of this steel here to the centroid of my PFC. And I'll draw in two more sections. Again, I want to make sure that the toes are pointing inwards. So here I'm going to release the beam command by selecting modify. I can select my PFC and then use the flip instance to point the toes inwards. The toes are pointed inwards here, which is fine. And now we can just set out these with temporary dimensions. So I'll select this beam here. And in this example, I want to set this out from the reference plane. So I'll use the grip here and change the witness line. I want the grip here to be to the back face of the PFC. And I'll set this at 1200. And I'll do the same here. We'll select this. We'll use the temporary grip on the dimension. We'll change the witness line here to the back face of the PFC. And again here, I'll set the dimension to 1200. Now to help us document this, I can obviously now make this a, a permanent dimension. And I can do the same over here. We'll make that permanent. And then we can set out these dimensions just by dragging them. Perhaps something like this. You can see how the dimensions nicely align as well, which is very useful. And to get the final dimension in here, I'll go to dimension again, and I'm going to go from the back face of this PFC here to this back face over here and place that in. Okay, so we can now see our balcony geometry detailed quite nicely. If we now go into our 3D view just to inspect what we've got and we rotate the model round, we can clearly see our PFC sections. I'd quite like to have the balcony geometry on the next level. So once again here, I'll select all of my parallel flange channel. On the context ribbon, we'll select copy to clipboard. And here we'll use paste, align to selected levels. And now we'll paste this up to the third floor. Okay, so we can now see all of our balcony geometry set out. Okay, so let's now make sure that we've saved our model. And that concludes our lesson.